Okay. Shalom. So glad you guys made it. Today we are continuing with our directed immersion in the original Hebrew of the book of 1 Kings. Chapter 13. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, so let's go. Vehine ish Elohim ba mihuda bidvar Adonai el Beit El or Beit El v'yahovam al meid al hamizbeach lehaktir. Okay, let's break it down. Vehine. Ve and. Yay. <laughs> was able to pause and fix the little issue that was happening there. So, ve. That's and, or, then, when, if, etc. Vehine, <coughs> now look, or behold, Ish Elohim, construct chain, and Ish. A man of Elohim, of God. So this is a prophet, of course. Ba. Ba. Well, we know Ba. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Hallelujah. So Ba, Ba, is came, or arrived. So, Vehine. And behold, or now look. And Ish Elohim, a man of God, Ba, came, or was coming. And there's a little bit of extra emphasis here. We've got the Ish Elohim there. Mihuda. Mi, that of course is Min. Hamotzi lechem min havetz. Min, meaning from, and our noon, usually we would expect to have a Dagesh here in the Yod, but sometimes Yod just eats up the Dageshes. I guess the idea is really, <laughs> what are you going to do with a double Yod? And in fact, this Yod has even assimilated. So, it not assimilated, it is quiesced. So it has lost its consonantal properties and is functioning as part of the vowel. So we have a long chiric, mi huda, from Judah. So we still get to keep our chiric. So vehine. Ish Elohim, or Ish Elohim, Ba Mihuda. Behold, a man of God was coming from Judah, or came from Judah, arrived from Judah. Bidval Adonai. Another construct chain. And Adonai is definite, right? Because that's a name. So it's definite. So because that's definite, and it's the word that's in the absolute, it's the last word in a construct chain, it will impart its definiteness to the other words in the chain. In this, in this case, just one. So Devar Adonai means the word of the Lord, or the word of Adonai. It's the word of Adonai, that definiteness 
being transmitted. And we have the bait as our inseparable preposition. It can mean in, against, with, by. Probably here it's by, like by means of, or with. It can be with. Vehine ish elokim ba mihuda. And behold, or now behold, a man of God came from Judah, arrived from Judah, bidvar Adonai, with the word of the Lord, or the word of Adonai, El Bethel, unto Bethel, which is a name that also actually is a construct chain when you're trying to digest its meaning. Beth, or Beit, it's from the Hebrew word Bayit. Bayit is the absolute form that means a house. Beit or Beth means a house of. And of course, the last word, Ale, God. House of God or house of the divine, right? So named from the experience with the Malach. The Yarodam and. Year of Alm Almaid Almaid. This is from the verb Ahmad to stand. This is an active participle form. Usually this is the pattern it takes when you want to make a participle in the call, the basic stem. You put a O after the first root letter. If it's masculine, this is masculine, we're saying in a tsere, the A sound under the second root letter. Right? So for example. Let's do another one. How would you say keeper? So we take the root sheen, man, reish, and then we take these, the same vowels. We put them on this word. Show mail. Show mail. So a Shomel is a keeper. Shomel Shabbat, a, a keeper of Sabbath, a Sabbath keeper, although it usually shortens to Shomel Shabbat. So our maid is a stander, or it can mean standing, like a gerund in English, like the running man, right? So, unto Bethel, the year of Arm was. Or made standing, we have to insert was to make it make sense. Al by al does not just mean upon, it can mean by near. We learned this from the Pharaoh's dream when it says that he was standing al hayeol, he was standing by the Nile, right? He wasn't standing on it in his dream. Al hamizbea ha meaning the. Really wish I could zoom in and write. It's kind of a way that I wanted to do this. Never good enough. The Mizbeach. Let me zoom in to make sure you can see that. Those of you on cell phones. Al Hamizbeach by the altar. Lehaktil. So the Lamed 
is another inseparable preposition. Meaning two or four. In this case, it's two. Haktil. So haktil, the root is ketel or katal. Here's the root. I'll just touch each of the letters a bit. Kof tet reish katal. And this is a hefil form. You can see there's two evidences that it's a hefil. One is we have the hay prefix to the beginning. And number two is we have the yod jammed in before the third root letter. These indicate we are dealing with he feel. Which is the causative binyan, causative or sometimes elative, causative verbal stem. So, katar is like to be smoky, and hiktir, although here we see it is haktir, is to cause to smoke, right? And this is usually used, we have a we have a, a word that comes from this verb, ketoret. Ketoret means incense, right? So very often you'll see in the Torah, in Vaikra, talk about ketoret samim, incense of spices, right? So like spicy incense or a fragrant incense. So le haktil, as we have it here, le haktil means to cause to smoke, right? Or to Offer up incense. Okay. Let me just clean up a bit. All right, so the whole verse, verse 13. Vehine. Vehine. Ish Elohim ba mihuda. Now behold. A man of God was coming or arrived from Judah, Bidvar Adonai, with the word, the word of Adonai, right? Definite, so the whole thing is the. El unto Beit El, the place called House of God or House of the Divine. The Alvam Almeid in Jeroboam was standing Al Hamizbeach by. Ha, the Mizbeach, altar. Le haktil, to offer up incense. Or perhaps even more generally, offering up incense. Making it smoky. <laughs> okay, I'll give you just a second there to take a screenshot if you're doing that for your notes. So for note takers, it might be worth mentioning that the call, Q-A-L, Active participle is present on this page. An example of that, I'll write it out. Call active participle and the form is masculine singular. Okay. All right, let's go to the next slide. Next verse, I mean. <laughs> so this was 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 1. Okay, verse 2. Verse 2 says, Vayikah. Al Hamizbeach, 
bedvar Adonai. Vayomer Mizbeach. Mizbeach. So this is in quotes. Actually, I should have said, Mizbeach. Mizbeach. Ko Amar Adonai. Hine ven nolad leveit dawiv. Yoshiahu. Pardon me. Yeah, yeah okay. Shemo. Vezavach alecha et kohane habamot. Hamaktirim alecha. Ve'atzamot adam yisrefu alecha. Okay, so that's a lot. <laughs> that's a pretty big verse. So let's go back. Here we are at verse 2. Vayikra. So the verb is kara. Kara. Kof reish aleph kara, which is he called. Right? And in fact, when you have a yod at the beginning, that tells us it's masculine. Masculine, in this case, singular. So yikra is he will call, generally speaking. It's what we call an imperfect form of the verb. Yikra. He will call or he is calling. It's an, it designates incomplete action. Now the vav changes our aspect here. This particular vav. And the reason is the pattern here that usually happens when you have a verb. And by the way, note takers, I mean the uh, index note takers, maybe make note of the imperfect form of the verb. When we have an imperfect form, okay, imperfect, it's got some stuff to improve, imperfect, <laughs> it's a fallen verb, <laughs> and then we attach a vav conversive Usually, the form that the vav conversive takes, if you want to drill deeper in this pattern, is it's going to have, usually, a patach underneath. That's the little horizontal bar making a short ah sound. And a strong dagesh in the first letter. Now, what happens if it's if it were ekra, right, with an aleph, meaning I will call? Well, then you're going to get compensatory lengthening. And that little patach will lengthen to a comets. Right, so you would end up with something like this, right? Because the dagesh can't go in, so it comes down like that. Okay, let me zoom in. A few of those of you on cell phones. So the form it's going to take would be if that first letter was say an aleph, eka, beyom eka, in the day that I will call. So say it was an aleph. You get the rest of the word. And we want to make it vav conversive. We would put the vav there. And we try to make it patach. And I'm going to use a different color for the dagesh, okay? Just to make my point. And we try to put the dagesh in the aleph. The aleph does not allow dagesh, so it's rejected. Oh, it disappeared. That's interesting. Hold on. So it's rejected, comes down here, and lengthens the patach to be a comet. See what happens? So we have a dagesh here, but it's not allowed. It's rejected. So that's what forms the bottom part of the patach, giving us a comet. Not happening in our verse, but just so that when you see it, you'll say, oh, there's not a dagesh there, but I see I see we do have this longer comets in play over here as a result of this being unable to accept the doubling. You can't double a glottal stop. And that's what an aleph is. It's a, uh, like, it, it used to be just a stop. Like in the T in the word British. If you don't say the T, British. The it, that's the, that stop part, that's the aleph. Okay. Vayikra. So, when we have that vowel conversive there, that is going to change the entire thing from imperfect to 
to perfect. And a perfect verbal form is usually how we express past tense. Not always. Sometimes it's a prophetical perfect, right? It's the counter missionaries will try to make claims sometimes, playing on your ignorance. Look, it's the past. Ah. Or if they've only studied modern Hebrew, they think it works that way, you know. So you just got to look out for those kinds of errors. So it's a perfect. So, so then he called, right? Not, and he will call. You got is he will call, but and he called, or then he called. Oops. Al. Over. Ha mizbeach. The mizbeach. The altar. Bidvar Adonai. By the word of the Lord, or by the word of Adonai. Construct chain. I'm not going to over diagram it because it's very similar to it's the same we had as what we had on the previous page. He called in the name in the word of the Lord or by the word of the Lord. Vayomer, same form here as we have over here. Okay, so I'm not going to recolorize it. See, we got the yod here, got the yod there, and then we have our verb here, verbal root there. So we know yomer is he will say. And then the vav here, vav consecutive, there it is, or vav conversive, vav with the patach and the dagesh and the yod, changes the aspect. So, yomer, he will call, pardon me, he will say, va yomer, and he said, and he said. So, this is in quotes now. Maybe I'll put some quotation marks there, why not? <laughs> Mizbeach, Mizbeach, ko amar Adonai. O altar, probably an evocative. O altar. Very interesting. <laughs> the the sages teach that when you have a person who is righteous, the Hebrew Bible will repeat their name like that. Right? So it's some kind of interesting implications to the altar. I guess the idea is the stones themselves, it's not their fault, right? <laughs> What's being done with them? <laughs> Mizbeach. Mizbeach. O altar. O altar. Ko amath Adonai. And this is a very enigmatic phrase. Ko amath Adonai. This is usually where we get the thus saith the Lord, right? So it's such said, literally, literally such said Adonai, right? Ko such or thus or thusly. It's really more like adverbial. Thusly amal Adonai. Thusly Hashem said. And now we have a quote within a quote, right? It's a single quote. He nay vain nolad. Levate Dawiv. Behold, vain, vain. So that's vain, but because of the A sound before it, it lost its Dagesh, its weak Dagesh, and became vain. A bane, a son, Nolad, is born. This is from the root Yalad, Yod Lamed Dalit. Yod. Lamed Dalit. And oftentimes when a verb starts with a yod, if the yod doesn't disappear, you we're gonna see it as a as a vav, right? Now the noon is preformative. This is a form. This is showing us that this is the Nifal Binyan. Nifal. Just like prefixing a hey. With a yod before the third root letter, tells us hefil, or doubling the second root letter, oftentimes tells us pl or pu'al. The noon prefix tells us it's nifal. So maybe index taker, take note of the nifal binyan. I'll write it from top. Maybe on the side here. Often, a passive, right? So, yoled would be birthing, but nolad means is born, was born, or just borning, really. <laughs> borning, if we had such a word in English. So, vain, 
Nolad, a son is born, or a son has been born. Levate David, or David, with pr traditional pronunciation. The Lamed is an inseparable preposition. Here it means two. Vain nolad levet David, or Dawiv, however you like to say that. A son is born to, and we have a construct chain here, Beit David. I'm just going to do the Israeli pronunciation for now, okay? So forgive me, you diehards who want the names right always. I like it too, but... So again, we have the same thing we saw on the previous slide. Here we have David, or Dawid, is definite. Because it's a name. Topic indexer, please note the rule, the three ways to make a word definite. One, it's a name. Two, it has ha in the front of it, the definite article from ancient hal, meaning the. Third, is it has a suffix on it, designating ownership by somebody, right? So a woman might say an ish is ishi, my man. So he's not any old man, he's her man. We know which man it is. Those are the three ways. And if that last word in a construct chain is definite, then it imparts its definiteness to the entire chain. So that's why we say, we translate to the house of David. Yoshiahu. Shemu. Yoshiahu. So it's in gray. So it's a name. Shemu. So that's from shame, meaning name. Name. And technically it's in construct. That's why you have the schwa down here, right? See the schwa? So. I'll just do it so you can be aware of the construct state there when we put a suffix. So I'm circling it with our color for construct. So the word shame has a schwa under it now instead of the tsere. Name of, oh, oh, name of him. That's what it sounded like in classical Hebrew. Yoshiahu, shemo. Yoshiahu was, or is, the name of him. So, his name. Vezavach ra'alecha et kohene habamot. Trying to clean up my drawing here a bit. Ve. And. Zavach. Oh, actually. So Zavach is our verb. That's a perfect. Zavach is he sacrificed, but we actually have a Vav conversive here. Now, the reason there's no Dagesh, this one's harder to tell because sometimes it's Vav conversive, sometimes it's not, is the verb is already in the perfect. See? It's already perfect. He's already perfect. It's a Messiah verb. <laughs> and then this, in this case, the Vav conversive is changing it. To make it all imperfect. So it's kind of the opposite of what we saw up above on the top right, where we had the verb, yikra, that was imperfect, and then the vav conversive changed it to the perfect. Here, we have a verb that is perfect, and the vav conversive is changing it to be imperfect. So, zavach, he sacrificed, ve zavach, and he will sacrifice.
Al upon ha you meaning the altar. He will so Yoshiahu Shemo. Yoshiahu is his name. Vezavach, and he will sacrifice al upon echa upon you. Et, the definite direct object marker. We don't translate that. Kohane habamot. So here we have a construct chain. So it's from Kohanim, right? Priests. We drop the man, Kohane, priests of Habamot. Ha. Who's the? The Dagesh in the next letter. The Bamot, high places. So Vizavach Alecha, and he will sacrifice upon you at Kohane Habamot. The priests of the high places. Hamaktirim. So, maktil, this is a, if you want to take note of it, in topic indexer, please note, this is a hefil, active participle, masculine plural form. All right, so. The indication that it's a hefel participle is the mem at the front. With the patah. And the Masoretes also gave us the, the hierarch here. Okay. This is indicating hefel, active participle. And then we have the eem, that's of course the masculine plural over here, right? Eem. The ha, it is the definite article. But when you put a definite article on a participle, if that participle is is representing people, in this case it is, maktirim is a maktir, and usually we would have a full here, here. we would have like a yod here, right? A maktir let me zoom in for the cell phone users trying to be more aware of your plight. <laughs> a maktil would be someone who offers up incense, right? Co literally causes to be smoky, okay? Causes to make ketoret samim, right? Uh, incense of spices. So the ha in this case, ha is going to mean who? The text also could have written she. It could have said she maktirim. It's just we don't see that she that often. It is a later biblical Hebrew development. And we will see it, but it's we're still with Torah Hebrew happening here. So who will cause incense to go up? Ah, ah, ah. Al upon Echa upon you. That almost sounded like some kind of a bird. Echa Echa Falcon or something. <laughs> My voice hurts after doing that. <laughs> My throat hurts. You gotta be careful with those pronominal suffixes. Oi. So we have another construct chain.
and a normal vowel, quite normal. It's okay to be ordinary sometimes. Just meaning and. So the word aksamut, the plural is the feminine plural. Ot, we put on feminine nouns. And the word it comes from trying to write and think at the same time is atsem. I'll just write it out for you. Atsem. It's a segolit, topic indexer. So it's segolit, meaning it's got two segols in a row. And they usually indicate that the accent will be on that first syllable. So atsen means bone. Atsmut means bones. Bones of Adam, of man. The atzmot adam and the bones of man. This is still the navi, the ish elokim speaking to Hamizbeach to the altar. Yisrefu. So the verb here, sin resh pe saraf is to burn. Right, this is where we presumably get seraphim from, unless it's from the Egyptian, like a flying snake. So a little bit different there. So saraf burn. The yod at the beginning, this is an imperfect form, by the way. The yod tells you it's he, but the u at the end means it's plural. So they. Yisrefu. You notice when you have two schwas in a row? The first one will be silent. And the second one will be vocal. It's always, always going to be like this. When there's two of them in a row, first one is silent. Yis, that's the end of the syllable. It's a closed syllable, meaning it ends in a consonant. Sin. Yis, second one, is always going to be vocal because it's beginning a new syllable. And when a schwa is under a consonant beginning a new syllable, it's vocal. Refu. Yis refu. They will burn. Alecha. Al. Upon. Ha. You. You. Well, that's all in quotes. All right, let's repeat that one. That was kind of a cool one, getting kind of gory and actiony. Vayikra al hamizbeach bidvar abamai, and he called over the altar. Bidvach Adonai, by the word of Adonai. Vayomer, and he said, Mizbeach, Mizbeach, O altar, O altar, Koamar Adonai, such are thusly said Hashem, Hine, Vein Nolad, Levait Doiv, a son has been born to the house of David, Yoshiahu Shemo, Yoshiahu is his name, Shemo. And he will sacrifice upon Ha upon you. 
et kohanei habamot, priests of the high places, hamaktirim, the ones who offer up incense, alecha, upon you, ve'atzmot adam, and the bones of man, yisrefu alecha, they shall burn, alecha, upon cha, upon you. Nasty. <laughs> Not good stuff. I don't I would hope the altar Hamizbeach is not too happy about that. Okay. I'm thinking maybe maybe two verses is enough for today. We did quite a bit. Maybe I will just add to the annotations on this last page to make sure it's Complete it doesn't always have to be complete, but let me I'm gonna mark a definite article here. If you guys have any comments or questions in the premiere, now would probably be a good time to ask. Marking the Vayomer here to show that the form is identical. What we see here, an imperfect becoming a perfect with Vav conversive. Okay. I think we have it pretty marked. We marked up. Well, let me just make sure that it's clear. Here is our Nifal. Okay. Yeah, let's... Oh. Let's get this inseparable preposition on the top mark. Bait. And I think we are good. I hope the volume was good today. We've got it a little lower because someone heard clipping when I had it too loud before. Okay, you guys have a great day ahead or evening, whatever the case may be. I really hope you were blessed by the teaching and that you are encouraged to continue learning Tanakhit, Biblical Hebrew. It is well worth it. And believe me, this is something when you learn it, nobody can take away from you. No one, no one, no one. So please be blessed. Stick to it and you'll be so glad you did. If you've been with us for a year now, you should already be seeing many patterns, understanding a lot of things, and understanding about 65 to 70 percent of the vocabulary that we see, that we go through, like right away. It's okay if it's less than that. Different people have different speeds, and if you stay another year, you're going to be really, really strong. So, be blessed. Shalom, shalom.